Hello, it's David. Just a really short video today to do a quick demonstration of how to flash uh, the onboard um, NAND flash memory on the DFB1. So I've got my Falcon out here, and the first thing you'll need to do is actually to turn off DFB1. So uh, we'll take the top off, move the keyboard out of the way. These configuration jumpers at the top right here for the uh, the firmware as of December 2022. Uh, what these uh, what these mean as you go from right to left on here. Uh, this is the master enable jumper. The first one is labelled disable. So when it's jumpered, the board is disabled. The second one is disable flash. And if uh, you don't have one of the onboard flash chips, then that will always be set. The third one, option one. Uh, it indicates whether you've got 64 or 128 megabytes of uh, TT RAM. I have 128, so it's jumpered. Option two, option two changes depending on the various firmwares, but at the moment with firmware 22.12, uh, uh, that uh, basically disables the high speed. So it'll run everything as normal. Um, it'll run with the FPU, it'll run with the CPU, it'll run with the uh, TT uh, RAM, but it will do so only at 16 megahertz. So in a normal configuration, we'll have it like this. Just uh, the jumper set for um, option one to indicate 128. And if I'm using the flash at the moment, then I will have that um, this flash jumper uh, removed. What I'm going to do in order to flash a new operating system on, uh, on my flash chip there is to disable DFB1 with the master uh, enable jumper. And then we can boot up. Okay, TOS boots up as normal in the default configuration. So I don't have a mouse plugged in at the moment, so I'm using the keyboard. Now in my general utilities directory here, I have a program called DFB Flash, which is available on the uh, DFB1 GitHub page. Uh, there it is, DFB Flash. And I have a firmware that I've been sent by Frank Lucas that he'd like me to test. So here it is, emutos frank.img. And all I do is I drag that uh, image onto my DFB Flash program. This will take a couple of minutes. Okay, once the programming is uh, complete, it reads that back into memory and then just does a quick verification pass. Now, there's nothing clever about this, it just reads the entire image straight into RAM. So you can see this is 512k uh, image, so you need to have 512k uh, RAM free. I don't think that's a problem for most Falcon users. There we go. So let's power that off. And then returning to the Falcon, we will remove our master disable jumper making sure that our uh, flash disable jumper is also unset you wouldn't have been able to write that by the way if you had disabled dfb1 but also disabled flash it wouldn't have allowed that and we'll uh, we'll throw the switch so this time we should see emutos boot up there we go let's just hold that oops Missed my chance. Control or delete, we'll try again. Oh, cold boot needed. Oh, and it's going to low res. There we go. So 1.2.1, 68030, it's an Atari Falcon. We've got 14 megabytes of ST RAM. We've got 128 megabytes of uh, TT RAM in this case. And we've got all of our GEMDOS drives uh, detected. No um, working NV RAM in my machine. So. The, uh, the date there doesn't make any sense. Um, you can see it's all in German. That's because uh, Frank uh, is German and uh, this is what he sent me to test. So there we go. Perfect. Let's let it boot to desktop. Et voila. Everything is as it ought to be. There we go. So there we go. I hope that's of use uh, to um, DFP1 users. 
and specifically Frank, who uh, sent me this image to test. I hope that proves that there's nothing wrong with your image, Frank. See you next time.